Hi, my name is Zach Wilson, and I'm going to talk about the Communication System American Sign Language, or ASL. ASL is a great communication tool for the people that have, that have been discovered that they're not going to have the vocal skills to actually verbally and vocally talk, but they still want to communicate, and this is a great tool. Or it could be for the ones that are young, and they might still have the ability to one day vocalize what they want, but they just haven't acquired that skill yet. Um, and the reason why I choose ASL is because you don't have to have a lot of tools with you at that time, at any time when you're traveling. You can generalize it to any setting. Um, with AACs and stuff, you have to have an iPad that could die. They're, they can get in the way. You have to either carry it on a strap or you carry it in your hands. You can't, can't do other things. But with ASL, you carry your hands with you everywhere you go. And so you can immediately sign and stuff. The only thing that they might have to carry around is like a little flip book that shows them signs um, that they haven't quite learned yet. So they're like, oh, I, I really like ball, um, but they haven't learned exactly what ball is. And so you, they've look, opened up the flip trying to go, oh, this is ball. And so that they can communicate into the other world. But once they learn those, you can take those cards off, add new cards. And then maybe one day they won't even need the flip chart at all. Um, one thing that you need to look at once you decide, oh, my client should learn ASL, is if they have the fine motor skills to actually appropriately use the sign. So let's say that they don't. So what we do is um, possibly create a program that works on those mo movements that are seen in a lot of signs. So maybe it's a finger up or two fingers up or a whole hand like this, a hand like this, um, fingers together like this. Those type of moves are seen in multiple different signs, and so learning those basic moves set them up for success when you actually start teaching the vocabulary and the signs that go along with them. Um, and once you do that, then you can start teaching the signs. And once we start teaching the signs, well, another thing that we need to think about is approximation. So when you're teaching words like ball vocally to a kid you're not going to automatically say all right i say ball and if you want a ball you have to say ball immediately too no we start saying say ball and they go but we're like yeah you said but and we give them the ball and they take the ball and they play with it it's kind of the same thing in sign language so this is the sign for ball um if we are teaching a kid ball we're not going to expect them to do this immediately um so we might get uh this motion or this motion or their hands are making it, but they're not actually getting close, or they're all over the place. Who knows? But if they start making that approximations, we reinforce it until they master that one. And then we start shaping it up until they actually hit the correct sign. Um, and we do that with all the words. And that's just how we teach an ABA. Um, and this should be carried on into ASL. Another thing that I remember learning about ASL, I went to a conference where Mark Zunderberg, uh, the guy that did the VV map stuff, talked about how when we're teaching language and that ASL is included in that is we don't want to teach these general words where that can fit into anything. Like if we just teach a kid to say, give me more, please, like the world will love that and they will automatically reinforce that by giving them what they want. But is that functional? Like, are they learning enough? We don't want them to have a small vocabulary that, yes, a lot of people will give them what they want, but is it independence? Um, and that's why when you're teaching sign language, one thing to think about is teaching the items, the objects that they want, teaching those signs. So like ball, jump, hug, those things that are truly what they want. And you can add those anchor words, I believe is what they're called, later so you can teach give me hug, I want ball, I want jump, give give me water, um, all those things can work and it'll be amazing. So ASL is a great tool. I know it's not for everyone because of fine motor skills. Um, some kids are just more inclined to use iPads and they're more successful at that. But I think ASL and sign language is a great way to go and a great source of communication that needs to be sought out. Thank you very much.